Okay, I'm ready if you are. All right, I'll start admitting people. Hi, folks. Happy Thursday afternoon, everyone. Or it looks like some people are Friday morning, maybe. Friday morning for some, yeah. Got that international vibe going That's today. Right. I like it. So welcome, welcome, folks. Um, in the chat while we're waiting, thank you for being early. It's always nice to see uh, folks tuning in a little bit earlier. Um, over in the chat, our do now, our digital do now for the webinar asks you to think first of someone who you would say is a great listener. And then the challenge is in eight to 10 words, describe what it is about them that actually makes them a great listener. And while you're at it, please do, of course, let us know where you're joining in from and what your pronouns are. So welcome, happy either Thursday afternoon or Friday morning. Or middle of the night, I guess, is another alternative as well. Thanks for joining. from Delhi. Wow. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know where you're coming from today. Very international audience. Singapore checking in. I love it. And hello from, from Singapore. I, I knew that there were going to be some people from Singapore. So I actually got ready. Let me hold this up to the camera. My little Singapore Starbucks mug. Uh, oh, it's not showing up because of the virtual background. Up. But that is uh, that's Robertson Key, right where where I used to live there. So thanks for for joining. And I'm sorry that I don't have a coffee mug for all of the places that are represented in the I chat, know. but I will work on building that collection for sure. Hi folks, welcome, welcome. If you are just joining right now, you may have missed the link to our slides for this session. So I'm gonna drop that in the chat right now. Um, the session is meant to be interactive. So you will need to have that link uh, open and ready, uh, lots of clickable items there. So we're gonna give folks just about another 30 seconds and then we'll get started. So while we're waiting for others, if you would kindly, of course, let us know where you're joining in from, what your pronouns are. And then we're also inviting you to think of someone in your life who you would say is a great listener. In eight to 10 words, what are the defining qualities that they have that render them a great listener? Uh, let us know a little bit about that over in the chat. That's kind of our warm up for this afternoon, middle of the night or morning, wherever you are jo joining in from. Thanks Very for sharing. Cool. It's great to see everybody, isn't it? Trisha, this is so this is so great that everybody is showing up for this. And this is our, our first webinar of the 2021 season. So it's kind of nice that we've got such a uh, right around the globe crowd. I'm enjoying that. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about the, the free webinar series since 
you are kind of the the genius behind that. <laughs> I don't know if it's a genius. Hey, let's see if we can get people to come and give away their content for free. That's the genius behind this uh, as, as it is. So thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, yes, last year we did, I think we ended up doing, golly, I can't remember. I think it was like 17 free webinars uh, last year. And uh, we're excited to get this year kicked off. All of our webinar, just to let you know, all of our ideas for webinars come from you. They come from people in our sessions, people who we've been working with since uh, really since the pandemic uh, started about a year ago now, which just seems crazy. And, uh, you know, people keep reaching out and say, hey, could you, could you help us with this? Can you help you with this? And uh, Trisha, maybe you could tell the story. I mean, we were in a training and you got a private message from some teachers that just said, hey, we're really struggling with supporting these kiddos. Do you think you can help us out? So, yeah. And that's, um, you know, again, kudos to you, Jeff, because you, you do kind of support when people are asking for help. We do try to do our best to make that happen. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the shifting schools resources, and you'll notice that those are embedded throughout this presentation. Uh, and as you are taking a look through those, um, you know, again, if there's something that shifting schools can create, or there's something that I can create for you, uh, let us know. Um, I, I really do appreciate, Jeff, the culture that you've built in that, um, you know, we're trying to really do our best to listen to the needs of educators. So uh, again, welcome. Thank you for joining. My name is Trisha Friedman, and um, I'm, I'm really excited that we have such a nice crowd turning up to talk about LGBTQ plus inclusion. Um, it is a topic, of course, that's very near and dear to my heart. For those of you who maybe don't know, um, I am an out queer educator, and I would say that, um, you know, in terms of me thinking about the need for this, there was a time in my career where I thought, nobody's asking me about what it's like to be gay and working in a school. Nobody's asking, nobody's asking. And then it finally dawned on me, maybe I actually have to initiate the conversation. Um, and luckily, you know, again, this entry task, if you will, here, asking about listening. Um, I'm very fortunate that I had some great colleagues who said we would like to listen more. Um, and again, I appreciate you giving an hour of your day to come and listen. So I'm just dropping the link to the slides there for you again in the chat. Um, again, it is meant to be a, an interactive session, so you're going to need to have those slides ready to roll. So the question that I get all the time um, when I'm doing consultancy work for schools around how they can activate LGBTQ plus allyship in their school, um, often when I'm talking with folks and uh, sometimes school leaders, I know that they envision it the way you see this image here as just sort of this very straightforward path upward on this like almost vertical staircase of we're just gonna do some stuff and it's gonna be amazing and we're on our way. When the reality is, I think schools actually need to be asking this question. What is it that you can each do in your own personal life? Um, because I do think if we're talking about LGBTQ plus inclusion, the number one thing that I hear from teachers all the time is, I am so afraid I'm going to say the wrong thing, so I don't say anything at all. And I think Okay, sure. You know, part of the reason, you know, if you are a subject specific expert, part of the reason that you feel so comfortable and so confident delivering that content to students is you've been having conversations around math, biology, around things that are your passion with friends, with family for a very long time. And I think those of us who want to become more comfortable thinking about LGBTQ plus inclusion in schools. There are some conversations that you need to be having in private. There are some reflections that you need to be doing. So again, moving from this idea of allyship as here we go, just moving up this staircase of just progress, nothing but progress. I'd like you to hold this image in your mind a little bit longer of this is actually more like a recursive journey where I'm going to have to reflect. I'm going to have to think back. And then maybe I can take some steps forward. So you'll notice that uh, Jeff and I actually have the same digital outfit on right now. Uh, this is our step back, reviewing and rethinking, or step up, building and beginning protocol. And that's really going to be sort of the frame that we will ask you to think through as we're looking at some resources today. So as you look at this image, and again, the link to the slides, thanks Jeff has just dropped it in there. If you're following along, we're on slide four, where you have a four corners exercise. You've got four different um, metaphors to think about. And I'm gonna ask for you to share in the chat, 
when you think about your personal journey to becoming an LGBTQ plus ally, which corner do you think best kind of tells the story of what that journey has been like for you? So I'm just going to give folks a few seconds here to think about that. If you had to pick one of these items, let us know in the chat which one of those items or metaphors do you think speaks to your experience in your journey? And feel free to let us know why or give us your interpretation of what that image means, how, what it communicates about your journey, if you'd like. If you want to take an exercise like that and you want to use this with your peers or your students, I want to point out on slide five where you see that little icon of the folder and download. That means anytime you see that, you can grab whatever that resource is and take it. So thank you for sharing which corner resonates with you. If you were going to extend this conversation, it would be interesting for us to think about whether or not you would have picked a different corner if we weren't talking about you, but we were talking either about your school or your community. For you to ask students or for you to ask colleagues to tell a story of how you maybe have moved from one of these corners to another or which corner you would like to move to next. And to list three experiences that have factored in to that answer. Uh, Jeff and I have been talking a lot about the power of storytelling in education. And something that, you know, strikes me is how infrequently we're sharing our stories with one another. So I think there's big power in trying to get folks to share some stories around our school. If we're thinking about whether or not it's LGBTQ plus inclusive, your experience as a student, comparing that to your experience as a teacher, what are two stories that either show that there is change or that there isn't. I know that for me, some of the homophobic, transphobic, biphobic things that I heard growing up, I also heard on campus as an adult. So again, there's big power in making time and taking time for stories and for sharing them. And at the start, of course, we're talking about this idea of having the communication piece ready, because as I mentioned, the number one thing that I hear again and again and again whenever schools or individual educators are starting out on this journey is, I am so afraid I'm going to say the wrong thing. And what I want to stress about that, and part of the reason I wanted folks to share where they're at on their journey, is that this is a journey. And it's okay to make some mistakes, right? It's much better to say, you know what, I might be saying the wrong thing here. I'm not sure, but I'm trying to learn. Please, like, let me know, actually, if something that I said here is, you know, maybe the language isn't right, or you've got some research, or you've got some information for me. I'm on a learning journey about this. So if we're having conversations with others, one of the things that I think is really important is to make sure that the table is actually set for that conversation. Um, and I would say, again, if you're following along with me here on slide six, the infographic over there on the left, if you click that, it's going to let you download that full infographic. Uh, and again, each box has another resource. One of the things that I think holds us back in education whenever we're having conversations are our biases. We bring our biases into all of our planning meetings. We have all had very specific experiences with school. Our schooling was unique to us, and we bring that into the way that we see uh, you know, the future of school should be. That defines it. So 
no matter where you are on that listening journey, you're going to need to really think about those listening skills that let you listen to others deeply and they let you listen to yourself critically. So I'm just going to pause for a moment. Um, and again, we're going to do this frequently throughout the session. Just pause, give you some time to think through a resource. And I think silence is really useful when we're trying to contextualize things for ourselves. So that's going to be a practice that we will do throughout. So I'm here on slide number six. And again, if I click on that image, it's going to take me over to this infographic. And anytime I want some more information, some of these biases may be familiar to you, others might not be. So if you want a little more information, if you've not heard of ex the exposure effect, you can click this box and it's going to tell you a little more. So I'm just going to take about two minutes here for you to explore that resource. And again, thank you. Jeff has just dropped the link to the slides in the chat again. We are on slide number six. We're going to come back to this resource in a little bit, but I do want to point out, um, you know, a, a, again, talking about setting the table for conversations, making sure that actually we have sort of primed what it means to have a conversation around LGBTQ plus inclusion or allyship is really important. And that first question there, are we willing to explore options that acknowledge the fact that we do not know everything? Because another obstacle that I see very often is folks will say, I don't teach any LGBTQ plus students. You don't know that. And even if that were true, you still teach students who will have friends, who will have family members, who will have colleagues who are LGBTQ plus. So it's really important, I think, this myth that having an LGBTQ plus inclusive curriculum is just for those kids. It's not, it's for everyone. So again, uh, just getting more comfortable with, we might not know. I sometimes ask school leaders, do you know what the climate is like for your LGBTQ plus students? And they say, it's great. They feel completely welcome. How do you know? Because I haven't heard otherwise. Okay. Is that like the defining answer, we've got to get more comfortable with the curiosity around saying, you know what, I, I don't know what that experience is like for them. I need to keep asking. So a way that I like to think about that is really thinking about, you know, schools are the best place to go to learn to be more um, intellectually humble, to get comfortable with, I don't know. So on the next slide here, and again, you've got that little file. So anytime you see that, it means this is a resource you can download and you're welcome to use again in any context. What if I had a daily reminder for myself and for my students where I practiced just being a little more uncomfortable with uncertainty? The best allies are curious folks who are willing, who are interested, who want to learn more and who model that ability of saying, I don't know yet. Now, of course, that's not an easy state to be. To be curious about your opinion takes effort. It is the easiest thing in the world to say, I feel this way, I know this, I will just continue in that state of being. And to remember that every conversation is an opportunity to practice the art of listening. 
when we're having conversations, it's really powerful actually to practice rehearsing, playing out different roles in a conversation. So on slide eight, these are a few roles. Again, you're welcome to download that. That helps, I think, for a conversation about LGBTQ plus allyship and other things really come to life because no matter where we are on our journey, we have to practice conversation. I hear folks saying all the time, like, kids don't know how to talk to each other. Conversation is a lost art. What are we doing to help support them? If we think it's an art, if we think it's a craft, that means it's something that we have to hone, that we have to break down into different bits so that students actually can digest and understand different ways of getting better at it. So on slide eight, you've got, again, you might not like all of these roles. Maybe you would have students try out two or three different ones, but it's really important if I'm thinking about the art of conversation that I'm thinking about it through different parts of a prism. So we're gonna pause. I know that we just looked briefly at a few different resources and I, get, I wanna give you some time now to go back to any of them. So looking back either at the allies journey, that was our four corners exercise, the setting the table infographic, how it is that we make sure that we are ready to have conversations, the idea of having daily reminders that, again, allow us to be more uh, meaningful participants in the art of conversation or roles, giving our students, giving ourselves different roles in conversations. What is one next step for you? And I'm going to ask in the chat, as you go back to any of those resources, and you are identifying your one next best, best step, would you say that it is a step up? It's about beginning and building, or is it a step back that is reviewing and rethinking? And what I wanna say is, you know, the connotation of step back, that doesn't necessarily mean going backwards. That means trying to get more perspective. So both of, both of these steps are really, really powerful. So I'm gonna go on mute. Again, the link to all of those resources is here for you on slide nine. Well, feel free just to kind of flick back through the slides, pick one of them and let us know your next step and whether or not you would see it as a step up or a step back over in the chat.
So thanks folks so much for, for sharing your next steps or again, a desire to take multiple steps at once. I wanna point out that a lot of actually what I'm seeing in the chat, um, when we're talking about LGBTQ plus inclusion, what we're actually talking about very often is best practice for schools, period. Again, slowing down, listening, trying to gain perspective, trying to make sure that the table is set for conversation. Um, I think when we talk about learning to be better advocates, better allies, this is work that helps us in loads of different spaces in school. So um, that's the other thing that, that I often will tell school leaders. If you invest in upskilling yourself in this area, it's going to help students in multiple areas. Um, and I'll also point out, if you like the protocol that we are using, this idea of framing things as steps up and steps back, the you see on the slide in front of you that you've got the little icon, you're more than welcome to grab that virtual background um, and use it for other reasons as well. So now that we've thought a little bit about communication best practice, and again, how we actually do some of that pre-work, uh, that's really important. I think the time and effort and energy that we spend getting ready for conversations has a direct link in terms of the actual quality and the outcomes of that conversation. So we spent a little time looking at some resources that I have found really useful for doing that. And now I'd like for us to dig into actual, actual conversation prompts that are great for allies as well. So if you're following along with me, we are here on slide 11. And we've got some more choices for you. So over on the left, I have a menu of all different types of questions for you to think about using. And if you remember at the start, I mentioned, you know, again, I hear people say all the time, I'm afraid of saying the wrong thing. You can practice having these conversations with friends, with family, with colleagues. So if that's you and you feel like I'm afraid of saying the wrong thing and doing harm in front of students, again, I always say it's really important to just mention, hey, I'm on a journey, I'm trying to learn about this, be forgiving. That's true of all of our subject areas in school. But these are questions that you can use with students that you can also use, again, with just people in your life. The more you're having that conversation, the easier it gets. So I'm gonna go on mute again. I'm gonna invite you over here on slide 11 to pick out one of the links that interests you. It's a conversation you could imagine yourself having with someone else or it's a reflective conversation that you would like to have privately. And then take some time in the chat after you have picked out one of those resources, let us know what your step up or step back is and how that thinking is related to the resource that you selected. So again, if you're following along, thank you, Jeff, for dropping that link to our slides. We're here on slide 11, just taking some silence for you to look at some resources and think about the one that works for your context and how it provides you with a little bit of fuel either for that step up or that step back.
So folks, thank you for sharing your thoughts in the chat. And thank you, uh, Jeff and, and, and Nikki for having that exchange around again, just leveraging the power of the chat, leveraging the power of some silence to, to think. Uh, you know, again, part of the reason that this is set up this way is because all of us is wiser than one of us. Um, again, when we are doing this work, your voice matters every bit as, as bit as mine. So again, if it feels sort of strange in a webinar for there to be these big little pockets of silence, uh, please remember those pockets of silence. It's, it's really about you filling in the void of all of the things that we've not been talking about that we so desperately need to be having more conversations around. So thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Um, again, you have the link to the slides, any of these resources that are useful, um, great. You're looking for other resources, please do uh, reach out after the session to let us know that you're looking for a different kind of conversation starter. So there's us having conversations with students, there's us having conversations with folks in our life, and then there's also seeing opportunities for students to be taking ownership of those dialogues and for students to be starting conversations with one another. So if you're following along with me, uh, moving over to slide 13, uh, Shifting Schools had put together a hybrid learning pen pal template and, struct and structure a few weeks ago, and we have released our LGBTQ plus allies edition. So if you are working in hybrid learning, um, it's kind of, this has been built for that dynamic. Of course, it works even if you are in person. Um, it works if you are remote. Uh, I love the expression, everything old is new again. Some of us might have had pen pals growing up. I certainly did. Um, and this is about setting up again either crossover cohort pen pals or again if you're in person it works too you could do crossover grades if you wanted if you've got a friend working at a different school and you wanted to set up pen pals or if you host a gsa and you have a friend at a different school that hosts a gsa this is meant to give you a framework and some prompts to have that student to student conversation as well so on slide 13 if i click this it's going to open up over to a pdf that has some thinking, some ideas on actually the logistical structure of setting up a pen pal uh, little mini network. And then you have five ideas with lots of links of ways that students can actually be chatting with one another on topics that are gonna help them develop as LGBTQ plus allies. Um, and sometimes when I say that, people forget myself as someone who identifies as queer i also have work to do as an ally i do not speak for all of the lesbians and i don't speak for the rest of the alphabet mafia either um, as we affection uh, affectionately call ourselves so i have a lot of learning to do this is for me too so again i'm going to give you some time and space you've got five ideas to scroll through i'll give you time maybe to pick out just one or two of them um, and again, they have a little bit of a slightly academic slant to them. So especially for those of you who are language teachers, this might be useful, not just as, uh, you know, sometimes I, I hear folks say like, oh, this is just about pastoral care time, or this is just about home learning. And we're going to talk a little bit more about it being subject specific later on. Um, but you'll notice that some of these are also set up to be an activity that you could bring into the classroom. So again, I'm going to go on mute. We're going to leverage silence, maybe explore one or two of the five ideas.
So folks, if you are following along with me, I'm on slide number 14. And if you click the image here, one of the other things that I hear people say is, you know, I'd love to have more conversations like this with my family members. And one of the best resources that I have found for doing that, um, and again, I, I, anybody that knows me knows, like I love, love, love podcasts. Um, again, I think for those of us who are living or learning in a hybrid world, podcasts have huge potential. Um, you, you can take the podcast out on a walk with you and then have the conversation later on. So on slide number 14, if you click on this, this is a resource that I created um, that is meant to help students have, or families, or chosen families, have a conversation about the podcast, The Two Princes, uh, which I think just recently has completed its third season. So there's a bunch of resources in here. Um, again, on the, the first slide, you have all of the links to all of the different places that you could check out that podcast episode. You also have some resources in terms of how do you actually go about thinking more critically about a podcast? You have some questions to explore, and then you have some quick challenges for that podcast as well. Um, and I wanna point out, you know, if you click on the questions to explore, you'll notice that a lot of the concepts that we're talking about, um, you know, the Two Princes podcast has been, you know, an award-winning podcast in part because it appeals to all ages. My wife um, is an elementary school vice principal. She's taught as young as grade one. She's very brave. I'm always in awe of people that can teach uh, early years. Uh, it's, it's a completely different dynamic for those of you who do it. You know that all too well. And of course, she is an LGBTQ plus inclusive educator, and she has received some pushback. People have said, what are you talking about? Grade one. That's not age appropriate. To which my amazing, brilliant wife often says, do you mean talking about family is not age appropriate? Do you mean talking about identity? That's not age appropriate. Relationships, friendships. And again, it's important to remember, sometimes folks will say, well, you know, romantic relationships, we don't talk about that at that age. When is the last time you saw a children's movie? We're perfectly comfortable with two bears or a dog and a cat being in love. So these things are absolutely part of the conversation. So again, two princes, um, if you are also a podcast uh, lover, or if you're not, this might be a great one to check out. It has an incredible cast. Um, the performances are great. I think the soundscaping is great too. And it's a resource that if you're, if you're on a drive, if you're driving together somewhere this weekend or you're going for a walk, that's a way to sort of invite in um, some ways to, to practice. So again, loads of resources there for you. Those of you who are really into this idea of data literacy, I think when we're talking about having our students be more data literate and really digging in and asking questions about the numbers. Um, over here on the right hand side, you have our shifting schools protocol for that, which is meant to walk students through, again, a conversation around data. And then over there on the left, you have lots of different options to explore. So some of you may know the uh, Gallup poll was done, I want to say about 10 days ago, uh, where they found out that um, now more than ever, students are identifying as LGBTQ+. But the data makes us wonder, is it students that are changing or is it that society has changed and it's actually okay to identify as such? So again, if you are teaching anything around data literacy, or critical thinking, this is another opportunity for you to embed inclusion. So this is the other thing is sometimes I'll hear schools saying like, oh, I'm going to do a queer lesson. We're gonna have a day where we have lessons about this. And it is not a one and done, it is not a pride month scenario. It's about infusing through the year, talking about the core concepts that Again, students need to learn about identity. Students need to learn about power, about community. They need to learn about bias. So just giving you a moment, thinking back either to the idea of setting up pen pal prompts, getting students talking to each other, or maybe using the two princes as a podcast listening party. 
when I've used podcasts as a teaching tool with my students, it's the only time I've ever had that issue of students wanting to go ahead and listen to the next episode before we're, you know, there in our conversation. So could you use a few episodes as a, we're going to have a podcast listening party. You need to listen to episodes one and two this week. Then we're going to have a chat about it or the idea of having data drops. As you look back through any of those three resources, what's the one next step for you? And is it a step up or a step back? Please let us know about it in the chat. So thanks folks for sharing those steps up, those steps back. Again, um, I really think we need to change the connotation of the idea of I'm taking a step back. That means, again, I'm just trying to see, I'm just trying to have a little bit of a broader perspective. And a reminder on slide 17, these are all steps that are about taking movement towards progress. So over here on slide 17, if you are looking for further subject guidance, um, again, this is part of my website that I'm always working on developing. So if you have come across a resource that you think belongs there and I have not come across it, there's space for you when you click on subject guidance at the bottom for you to add it. So for primary school, it has uh, resources that have worked at different grade levels. For middle and high school, it's broken it down by subject specific. And then you'll also notice on that page, um, there's just sort of some school-wide resources that are there as well. The step in the middle, um, you know, this is the reality. I wish that it were not, but the reality is that having these conversations, even setting the table sometimes for these conversations also means having to deal with resistance. So if you click that middle link, um, those are a few resources that I have found really helpful for that. There are also resources that have reminded me to check my own bias. And the resource over on the right, um, you know, again, sometimes when I work with schools, they say like, oh, you know, we have 
the occasional bullying issue, but you know, our situation is good enough. And I think it's really important. Sometimes we frame it as, is our school safe? Is safe good enough? Is that the best that we can do? Is just something is safe? If I were having a dinner party one day soon, I will be having a dinner party. I'm not doing that anytime soon. But in the future, when I am having a dinner party, if I invited you and part of my invitation to you was come to dinner with me, you'll be safe. Would you want to come to that dinner party? So I'll give you a moment, just take a look at one of those three resources. What's your step up? What's your step back? Let us know in the chat. So folks, it's great to see so many of you in the chat saying, oh, I wanna share this resource with a colleague or I wanna bring it back to my team. If that is perhaps your next step forward that also allows you to take a step back, um, I would say a useful resource for having um, some structure. So if you're sharing some of those resources and you're following along with me here on slide 18, 
Uh, what you will find if you click in the middle is that you can make a copy of our Shifting Schools, uh, what Jeff and I lovingly refer to as our Mighty Mites Jamboard template, where if you're looking at resources, you're thinking about, okay, what might be the most important? And folks can add their thoughts in terms of, okay, the most important thing to do next is when, where else might we go? So again, if you're following along with me, the resource that I'm talking about here is on slide 18. If you do plan on sharing any of these resources and the resources are yours, take as many of them, do whatever to them you would like to do. If that is something that you plan on doing as a structure, this might actually help you. Again, we talked about setting the table, setting the conditions for a conversation to be really productive. Um, I think this structure is really useful and I like the frame of saying might because that takes a little bit of the tension out of have to, must do, Let's just be open to opportunities. Let's be open to what we might be thinking about doing. Um, if you have been following either my podcast or our free webinar series, Pride and Less Prejudice is a nonprofit organization that donate children's lit that's LGBTQ plus inclusive. They have done this um, for, I think, all of North America. They've covered, I think, I want to say all 50 states by now. They do tremendous, incredible work. And they have a great celebrity panel that's coming up soon. So you can click there to learn more about it. And I mention it because they've been really kind in donating. Um, that's not a free event. It is a, an event that you need to pay for. If you are interested in uh, entering to win a seat there, you have a survey over here on slide 20. We're going to give a seat uh, to that celebrity event panel for you to attend. If you're curious and you want to learn more about Pride and Less Prejudice, you can click there to watch the free webinar that they did with Jeff and I back in 2020. If you liked that Jamboard template um, at Shifting Schools, we have more of them. Again, you know what we're talking about today is having really intentional, really meaningful, powerful conversations. And you'll notice that taking time slowing down, that was part of our, our flow in this webinar. We need to do that. We do find tech really offers us some of the scaffolding to do that a little bit better. So we do have lots of, of Jamboard templates for you to check out if you're interested. That's over there on slide 21. But it's five o'clock. Our hour is up. Thank you so much, folks, for giving up your time, energy, and effort. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Tricia. As always, uh, as people are over in the chat have been saying, the uh, resources are insane. Welcome to a Trisha Friedman webinar where you don't leave. Uh, we actually get complaints that there are too many resources in our trainings, if you can believe that. So uh, you just got a taste of that. Uh, so please make sure you can bookmark that slide deck that Trisha created for you. You can bookmark that or copy and paste that URL into a document or somewhere that you want to go back. It will be there uh, forever or until Google goes away whichever comes first, uh, seeing it's built in Google Slides. So um, it is there for you. And, and all of the resources are linked in that slide deck for you. Uh, Trisha mentioned we have done a, a quite a few other uh, webinars around inclusiveness, uh, specifically with LGBTQ+. Uh, over on our website, shiftingschools.com, if you click under resources and webinars, you will see, I think that at least we've done at least two or three others last year, I think, Trisha, didn't we, with, mm -hmm. uh, with different groups as well. Uh, and their slide decks and their resources are all linked to the webinars over there as well. So uh, all of that is free there for you uh, when you are ready for them. So, well, thank you so much. Uh, I know for some of you, it is early morning. I'm sitting here looking at Amanda Ducardi, who's just being, it's probably like 2 a.m. or something for her uh, in New Delhi. So uh, it's great uh, that uh, some of you, I know it, it's middle of the night. So really appreciate you taking time. And I love that we had 40 people show up for this and we only had 19 people show up for one on assessment. That just makes my heart warm uh, <laughs> when we're talking about this stuff. So Tricia, thank you so much for everything. Um, we can hang out a little bit, maybe have anybody has questions. Otherwise, uh, enjoy the resources. Thanks, Thanks so much, folks.